this is what you get. You, not to say that your concerns about inflation weren't valid. Undoubtedly, they were. But by signing up for Donald Trump, you get this. Not only do you potentially get Matt Gates as attorney general, but and, and you get Tulsi Gabbard, you know, heading the national intelligence agencies. But now you have Robert F. Kennedy Jr. threatening to take away medical research, vaccinations, and even fluoride. MSNBC is losing it over Trump's latest cabinet picks. And the reactions are wild. Let's dive in together to see what they had to say. And I'll break it down with my thoughts along the way. You don't want to miss this. You know, here's here's one thing. None of this should be a surprise to any of us. The, the surprise is only those who didn't think Donald Trump would do what he said he, did, he was going to do. He said he was going to give Robert F. Kennedy Jr. a key role in health care. And the thing, you know, the thing, Jonathan, that strikes me, we are just at the end of his first full week as president elect. And he is moving so much more quickly and with so much more intent uh, than he did eight years ago when he won the presidency in 2016. Think about where we are now compared with where we were then. He's moved uh, rapidly on making some of these key appointments. He's made some that are pr pretty broadly acceptable and some that have just raised the hackles uh, 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 around the country and certainly here in Washington, even among uh, some Republicans. But it is a demonstration of how different I think this ter Trump term is going to be compared to the last one, where he surrounds himself with people he knows he agrees with him, uh, who will not uh, be challenging him, and with a much stronger sense of how things work in Washington and how to get done the things that he wants to get done. MSNBC points out that Trump's approach this time feels much more focused and calculated compared to 2016. He's moving fast, picking loyalists who align with his agenda like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Matt Gates. This shows she's learned how to navigate Washington, but it also signals a more divisive term ahead. Voters may have prioritized issues like inflation, but leadership is a package deal. Trump's bold and controversial picks reflect this style doubling down on his base rather than appealing to the middle. Whether this works or backfires depends on how his term plays out, but it's clear he's coming in stronger and more determined this time around. Listen, we saw what was going to happen and now it is happening. And so I do feel like this is a moment for people to get real and for people to stop saying like, oh, this is going to end up being much more moderate than anybody expected. When are you going to stop? So when are you going to start uh, apologizing for saying that democracy was threatened? I mean, I think it's time to get real and realize that this is really what we're up against. But I also think the fact that we all feel a little bit, I don't know if flummoxed is the right word, sort of rocked by the increasing incredulity of these choices is that it is meant to shock us. It's meant to adjust our sense of what is normal, what is possible, and to sort of so disorient us as to what it counts to propose governance in the United States, that we're ready for the most radical pronouncements um, and actions. And I, I do think we're supposed to feel the way that we do right now. I think that's part of this. It's a shock and awe campaign against American traditions and mores. And, um, and, and that's, I think, how most of the country feels about it. I mean, I, I think to, to sort of sustain the military analysis, the Iraq war starts with a shock and awe bombing campaign. The war is a catastrophe. I mean, it doesn't connote competence. It doesn't signal that he will succeed in successfully demolishing American democracy. It does mean that we as a press still every single time chase the shiny object. And this week, the shiny objects are named Matt Gates, Tulsi Gabbard, and RFK Jr. Next week, they'll be named, or maybe by, by, by 9 o'clock, they'll be named Steve Bannon and Cash Patel, and they may be running the FBI. Those are the shiny objects. But the movement is propelled by this hatred of the Democratic Party and the media elites, but also a promise, a promise to deliver on the economy, on immigration. And the people in charge of those two things, one of them is an alleged child sex trafficker, and the other is, by her own telling, a dog killer. I mean, the, the competence may be where he gets sort of bollocked up. Rachel Maddow and the other MSNBC commentator are saying Trump's cabinet picks aren't random. They're part of a strategy to shake things up and redefine what's considered normal. Rachel calls it a shock and awe, movement to keep people stunned and off balance, making it harder to push back. These con commentator compares it to the Iraq war strategy, flashy and chaotic, but not necessarily effective. They argue this approach might backfire if the people in charge can't deliver on big promises like fixing the economy or immigration. While it grabs attention, it traces the question of whether this chaos will lead to real results or just more dysfunction. From a common sense view, this seems like a gamble. 
If Trump's team can't follow through with tangible improvements for voters, this could blow up in their faces. Chaos might work in the short term, but people won't stick with it if nothing gets done. This right here is a solid and important take from Tyrus. You've got to hear this. It really ties together everything we've been talking about today perfectly. Check it out. This, uh, this isn't a movie. This is a, a war is about to... Let's hold off on the soiree and the partying uh, <laughs> because he's going to attempt to drain the swamp with this group of individual, which means the fight that's coming back is massive because you are going to, to try to take apart an establishment who has fleeced the American people for generations. Yeah. Senators didn't, these career senators with their gold bars and their closets and their, and their monies and being able to, cousins and first cousins and lobbyist sons getting jobs and places and being pushed to be in charge of energy in China or Ukraine, all of that's gonna come to an end. And you think they're just going to be like, OK, mm -hmm. you know, so it's going to be if he's picking these people, every one of them has an axe to grind. And there's a reason for that, because this is going to be the fight for the American. It's one thing to get in. It's another thing to actually make change. He's got the House. He's got the Senate. So all this is great. and We're all fired up. But if he walks in there and doesn't do term limits in that first week, because that's how you stop all this stuff. That's how you stop the career. You got to hit the term limits, and then you unleash the dogs. And then you find out how much money they've been stealing from the American people. Eventually, the people who donated to the Democratic Party to raise it up to a billion dollars minus 20 are going to be like, they're going to find out that they were being conned by the government, that, by the progressive government. So that's not, they're just going to lay down and take it. It's going to be terrible. Pelosi's sad today because she's trying to figure out who she's going to take out first, who they're going to come after first. So he's smart in picking guys like Gates and guys because they're already flawed and they already have their issues, but he's coming for your job. Yeah, it's So it, it's, it's game on. Tyrus is basically saying we're looking at a massive fight between Trump's team and an establishment that's been running the show for decades. He's pointing out that if Trump really wants to drain the swamp, it's not going to be smooth sailing. Politicians, lobbyists, and people with deep connections to power aren't just going to roll over and let it happen. The idea of term limits and exposing corruption sounds great, and it's something a lot of people would get behind. But actually pulling it off is a whole other story. It'll take serious effort and cooperation, even from Trump's own ollies, which isn't always guaranteed. Tyrus makes an interesting point about Trump surrounding himself with fighters like Matt Gates. These are people who are ready to take on the system. But they also come with their own baggage. That could make it harder to actually get things done, even if the intentions are there. And let's Burrell the establishment isn't just going to sit back and let someone blow up the system they've been benefiting from. They're going to fight back hard. This isn't just about passing laws or exposing shady deals. It's about taking on a whole system that's designed to protect itself. At the end of the day, it's going to take more than just big talk and big promises to make real changes. Even with control of the House and Senate, It'll take. Strategy focus and follow through, if Trump and his team can actually deliver it, could be a game changer. But if not, Trisk's just being more political drama either way, this is going to be one heck of a fight to watch.